Welcome back to the CD Genomics Next Generation Sequencing video series. In this video, you will learn about the two enrichment strategies in NGS, hybridization capture and PCR amplification. The introduction of NGS has provided us with a broader and deeper perspective of genetic research. While whole genome sequencing may capture all possible mutations, Targeted next-generation sequencing that focuses on specific regions of the genome remains a widely used, efficient, and cost-effective strategy, which offers a focused approach of the most phenotype-altering regions for NGS. The enrichment is a critical step of target NGS. It is the selection of the regions of interest out of the whole genome allowing researchers to choose to only study a fraction of the genome where specific genes, axons, or other genomic regions of interest are present. Moreover, targeted NGS simplifies downstream bioinformatic analysis, provides greater sequencing depth, and increases sequencing sensitivity. These virtuals can be valuable in variant calling and gene expression studies. There are two fundamental target enrichment strategies that can be employed prior to NGS. Capture and amplification. Each will be introduced in this video. The capture can be realized through the hybridization of fragmented DNA with baits, complementary to regions of interest, either on a microarray chip or free in solution. In solution hybridization capture can be scalable and easily automatable and rules out the shortcomings of microarray hybridization, such as high cost, limitations to the number of samples, and large sample requirements. Thus, solution-based hybridization becomes the mainstream approach of capture-based enrichment for NGS. In a hybridization assay, the protocols start with random shearing of the genes, which are later denatured by heating. Randomly sheared overlapping fragments are captured by DNA or RNA single-stranded oligonucleotides specific to the region of interest. DNA bound to the baits is separated from background DNA. The baits are removed and DNA enriched for regions of interest is taken forward to the second round of PCR, followed by NGS of the enriched nucleic acids. Hybridization-based target enrichment provides the following benefits. Provides depth and uniformity of coverage required for genetic variant discovery studies. Focusing on specific regions of interest. Efficient and cost-effective. Reads can be aligned to a genome. High sensitivity for variant calling. Hybridization-based assays may offer a wider scope for superior performance through optimization of bait design. It works well for genome typing and rare variant detection, including single nucleotide polymorphism detection, indel detection, copy number variation detection, and structural variation detection. Pre-NGS targeted enrichment can also be carried out by the PCR strategy which is also known as the amplicon-based target enrichment. Embarked with greater primer probe specificity compared to the hybrid-based capture, higher on-target sequencing reads can be obtained by amplicon-based enrichment, which has been preferentially used on the basis of short preparation time and small DNA input amounts. Thus, amplicon-based NGS enables fast, accurate, and cost-effective detection of genes of interest. In an amplicon-based target enrichment assay, genomic DNA is first fragmented by enzymatic or mechanical methods. The following steps involve the amplification of the regions of interest using sequence-specific primers, where regions of interest could vary greatly among axon, rRNA, miRNA, and etc. In this step, PCR runs in single or multiplex reactions, generating single or multiple amplicons. Then amplicons representing each region of interest are pulled to create a library of fragments for sequencing. 
The amplicon-based approach requires low DNA input and has higher on-target rates. And is easily accessible and effective in enrichment and specificity. On the other hand, this approach sometimes can be difficult to optimize reaction conditions with regard to multiplex amplicons. In addition, adjusting the targets needs revalidation and PCR bias can influence the outcome. Amplicon sequencing is used for genotyping, by sequencing, and for the detection of germline SMPs, indels, and known fusions. It's particularly suited to the detection of disease-associated variants, as well as validating CRISPR-R on and off target edits after genome editing. Generally speaking, amplicon-based approaches may be preferable for their simplified workflow and smaller amounts of required DNA. However, hybridization-based strategies are less likely to miss mutations and also perform better with respect to sequencing complexity and uniformity of coverage. There are as well differences in sample requirements, sensitivity, workflow, cost, and etc. The choice of enrichment methods for targeted sequencing assays is an important consideration. This will depend largely on the research direction, sample size, the size of the region to be targeted, the cost of sequencing, and the required coverage uniformity and sensitivity of the assay. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information on these sequencing techniques, please visit our website, 3 w cd-genomics.com. We are more than happy to be of assistance.